Lorena Nicotera from the University of Groningen. Good afternoon, everyone, and my greatest appreciation to the organizers of this symposium for giving me the opportunity to present my work about astronomy from the moon here today. I will start by saying that the moon is a unique site for a variety of astronomical observations that have the potential for unprecedented breakthrough discoveries. And in particular, the far side of the moon and the craters at the lunar poles are considered as sites of extraordinary scientific importance for a high impact astronomical research that is unmatched anywhere else. However, uh, these same locations are also concentrated in valuable raw materials, including water and minerals that have raised increasing attention for commercial missions, uh, which envision the profitability of lunar resources in the long-term lunar exploration plan. And these will result in overcrowding the cis lunar environment and creating destructive interference among um, conflicting activities. Therefore, this also calls for an urgent intervention of the astronomical community to defend their golden opportunity of doing astrophysics from the moon. To give a brief overview of the scientific importance of such sites, the far side of the moon is shielded from radio interference by radio sources on Earth and in Earth's orbit by 80 decibel. Therefore, it is the most radio quiet environment in the whole solar system. And its large areas of smooth terrain are um, optimal locations to place uh, very sensitive telescopes to perform low frequency radio observations. Uh, that could lead to the detection of the very faint atomic hydrogen signal belonging to the dark ages before stars and galaxies formed. And this is of extraordinary importance for cosmology and fundamental physics research uh, elucidating the nature of the dark energy. But the, um, these large areas of smooth terrain on the far side of the moon are only a few, and the most, prom the most prominent are here indicated in this figure. And for example, Mario Moscoviensis is considered as the most promising for cosmology purposes, uh, although it also has a high concentration of helium-3, thus providing an example of conflicting activities. But mining operation in such a site would likely create electromagnetic noise, uh, making it completely useless for cosmology. Other very important sites are craters at the lunar poles. Um, most of the craters reside in permanently shadowed regions. So the lunar cold traps are the floors of craters whose rims are um, continuously exposed to the sunlight. Thus, these rims are peaks of eternal light, uh, while the floors are very dark and they can extend for um, up to 50 kilometers in diameter. And these, um, these um, the floors are um, extremely dark and cold, even below 50 Kelvin in the coldest traps. Therefore, the combination of the um, dark and cold floors and illuminated rims uh, make these uh, craters at the lunar poles uh, optimal for a variety of astronomical observations uh, according to their scientific objective. Uh, in fact, these very cold temperatures provide um, a natural cooling uh, that is essential for um, the operation, for example, of far infrared telescopes to detect uh, Earth-like exoplanets or um, for cosmology purposes. And moreover, the very low seismic activity and the cold and stable temperature translate into the lowest background noise possible. Uh, therefore, um, it could be possible to achieve in these craters the highest sensitivity for the detection of gigahertz gravitational waves, uh, to which the currently operating gravitational wave facility on the ground are not sensitive, uh, nor the next to launch LISA space mission. However, at this very cold temperature, they also retain specific volatiles, therefore they are alluring to both scientists and commercial actors. Of course, astronomical objectives from the moon and um, uh, mining-oriented operations uh, have greatest potential to conflict with one another, and intense mining activities uh, will pollute the whole environment in a way that experiments cannot be made anymore. Um, so they could also damage um, systems like exposed optical surfaces. And also landing rocket um, itself represent a threat. Um, in fact, uh, landing rockets could rise up amount of dust and also in the worst cases, uh, it could be um, accelerated to lunar orbits. So 
it is important to assess which is the distance allowed for landing rockets with respect to the highest value uh, lunar series. But even more importantly, there is um, an upcoming uh, series of mission um, either in lunar orbits or on the lunar surface that threaten to reduce the scientific value of the far side of the moon. Uh, in fact, for cosmological purposes, um, the very sensitive telescopes uh, are needed and the electronic leakage from other sources uh, is likely to limit the um, scientific value of the far side. It will absolutely do that. And this is where the International Astronomical Union comes into play, uh, demonstrating that good astronomical sites are rare, no matter where they are located. So protecting the very special ones on the moon um, um, is important and needs a dedicated international policy. Um, briefly, the policy framework around the use of the uh, outer space, that's also this is lunar space, is represented by the Outer Space Treaty, whose principles contain the basis for a defined process for the protection of CESIS. However, they lack uh, a clear coordination of how activities should be conducted in a way not to interfere with one another. As well as the modern day Artemis Accords, they represent the uh, modern effort of creating an international policy uh, which is grounded into the OST, but that at the same time reflects the potentialities and aspirations of a technologically advanced society. And even if they are presented as an operationalization of the obligations contained into the OST, in a deep analysis, they appear also innovative and even controversial, for example, through the mechanism of the safety zones that attempts to regulate the use of space resources but it could be also read as a leg legitimization of national appropriation of them. So um, the Artemis, of course, in particular in section 11, also contains the basis for the protection of, um, of CESIS. However, um, the current policy framework does not pay particular attention in the protection and prioritization of lunar science over other uses. Therefore, here it was my advice to the IAU. Uh, the IAU, um, being a global organization, should be the place for collecting the consensus um, upon the highest priority objectives achievable from the moon and the site criteria that allow the realization. And this will result in a, um, a selection of the prime sites that need to be devoted only to science, so protected from uh, um, the harmful effects of other uh, uses. I also advise the IAU to look at the possibility of creating an ad hoc working group for lunar um, science. And I had the pleasure of knowing that it was approved. So a new working group called Lunar Astronomy will be set up within Commission B7 as an extension of its mission of protecting existing and promising astronomical observatories. Yes. Then I also advise the IAU to uh, expand its connection with the private sector, so it should uh, set up an interface with and talk to space agencies and also um, uh, industry um, to, on behalf of science to make sure their plans are aware of the scientific issues. And in proceeding, the IAU should cooperate with other professional societies, for example, the International Academy of Astronautics, which is already moving some steps forward in raising this awareness in a multidisciplinary setting. And through its observer status, the IAU should take a leading position in approaching the UN COPUS to get the consideration of uh, the protection of lunar cesis by the committee within the five-year mandate of the working group on the legal aspects of space resource activity. Uh, moreover, it will be appropriate uh, to also approach Artemis signatories to discuss the necessity of the protection of lunar cesis, as well as the IAU should provide input to the um, ITU study, um, so uh, share efforts to preserve the radio quietness of the lunar far side. Thank you very much. Yes, we have one minute for... Uh... Any question? Maybe we can see if there are questions online. Yes, we have question online. No, we have. Uh, uh, we still haven't gone to the questions online. So, yes, Yana. It's from online. It's the question from Slack from Robert. Uh, Lorena, are you talking with people like Alice Go Gorman about protecting lunar sites? 
some potentially interesting crossovers with her sp space archaeology work. Uh, could you repeat the, the very... Are you time? talking with people like Alice Gorman about protecting lunar sites? Basically, he is recommending you to contact some people, I guess. The question is, are you discussing with people that are trying to preserve uh, evidence sites on the moon? Uh, I know that, of course, in the moon there are uh, important sites also as cultural heritage because there is not only astronomy from the moon, but there are many reasons to protect uh, some sites for other purposes. So, of course, it is uh, like a shared uh, interest for many different fields. Yeah. Okay. I think we don't have time for other questions, but uh, she will be available during the break to answer your questions.